What's going on guys? Hayabusa is actually going into the shop tomorrow, right there. It's gonna be getting the Alien Head 2 exhaust on it, Sprint Air Filter, Velocity Stacks, and the BT Moto ECU Flash, so I cannot wait. Hopefully, we'll be done by this weekend. But anyway, we're gonna be talking about Mad Max, which is right here, the beloved Mad Max. Listen guys, we will be at Bergen County Harley-Davidson this weekend, Saturday, May 6th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. They're also having an international female ride day. So that is going to be like from 9 to 10. And they're doing kickstands up at 10 a.m. Uh, they're going to have some food there. And then they'll be out uh, doing their ride at 10 a.m. And then we'll have pretty much the entire uh, day from 9 to 3 p.m. I will be there so we could talk. Looks like the weather is going to hold up. I'm not kidding you, it's been raining here like almost every single day. So anyway, we're gonna be talking about Mad Max, but as you guys know, we have the giveaway. I think there is only seven hats left. So if you want, get yourself entered on my website, www.cycle-fanatics.com if you buy a hat. You get a keychain and five stickers, you'll be entered to win. We are picking someone live when we're there at Burton County Harley Davidson. So this is what I wanted to talk about today as far as Mad Max. So let me show you guys. Um, we have, let's see, we have about almost 6,000 miles. We got about 5,600 miles on Mad Max. So, uh, you know, fairly enough miles. The year really hasn't even began and we already have 6,000 miles on it. Sandy's had his bike for about, what, a year and a half, and he's only got like 2,500 miles on it. I'm only busting your chops, brother. So what I wanted to go over with you guys is basically everything I've done to the bike, what have I not liked, right? So we'll go over everything and tell you guys, like go over all the upgrades. So this way you guys can kind of make a proper decision. I've had a lot of these components on previous bikes, so that's why I knew they were kind of, you know, definitely tested. I knew they worked very well, but I still want to go over them because you guys always ask me what works, what doesn't work. Like I always get the question, how's the seat? Or I get the question, well, how's the suspension? Well, now I could tell you because there's a lot of things that are on this bike that I did not have on Silverback. So I guess we'll start at the lighting. You guys know that I rock all the Ciro 3D lighting. Let me, let me turn on the bike. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but stay tuned because we're gonna go over everything. So this way, like I said, if you guys want to get some components that I use on Mad Max, you'll know what I think is good and you'll know, um, you know what I would do differently. So as far as the lights, I got all Ciro 3D lighting. The light cannons have been a huge hit on all of my social media platforms because not only they look good, they are very purposeful. And the reason being is that this being a road glide, when I turn the handlebars, the fairing is stationary, unlike a street glide where the light moves kind of with the fairing like in a turn. So because I ride a lot and I ride a lot in the nighttime, I definitely wanted a lot of visibility when I'm riding. It just, it's a lot safer and it's a lot easier when you have the entire road lit up. It's a lot easier on your mind, on your body, less stressful. So I went with the light cannons and those light cannons right there are kind of turned a little bit out. So this way on the road, they're kind of shining towards the outer portions of the lanes and I love it. I was actually able to see when I was riding down to Daytona, uh, literally like a herd of deer through South Carolina and thank God I seen them, I slowed down, but I was lucky enough to where they didn't get startled and started crossing the highway. But that's what I'm talking about. You need to get home to your family. Lighting is absolutely essential. So I have all the Ciro 3D lighting in the front and let me tell you, Everybody tells me this thing is bright as hell, including the back where we got the bad blades and the Latitude taillight. I just love it. Let me flip on a switch for you guys. 
And this way you guys can see how that looks. I just love how it looks and the bright LEDs are just, um, you know, they're just super bright. Never have an issue with any of the components. And if you do, uh, Ciro 3D is one of the best customer services that you will ever get uh, or ever have an experience with. So definitely lighting, I wouldn't change anything about the lighting. I would strongly recommend the Ciro 3D light cannons. So let's go over, a lot of people ask me, well, what are they mounted to? So what they're mounted to is the, I took off the uh, big crash bar, stock crash bar, and I, re and I replaced it with the Santoro Fabworks crash bar. This setup you have to remove, obviously on the big um, crash bar, on the stock crash bar, you have the brackets that come up from the crash bar and get mounted into your fairing. You have to get this Y bar, and I got that on eBay in order so your fairing gets mounted to that. And then you could go with the Santoro Fabrics crash bar and mount your Ciro 3D light cannons. And then I just put some 3M um, this is like almost like a non-slip tape. It's very rough. It's from 3M. So this way when I put my boot on it uh, and I use it as a highway peg, it is absolutely sturdy right there. It doesn't slip off. If you don't have that on there, your boot will tend to slide off the end. So that is a definite must. Okay, so now a lot of people also ask me what kind of fender this is. Well, it's a stock Harley Davidson Road Glide ST Fender in Vivid Black that I just went to the dealership and ordered it. That's how simple. You just go to the dealership and say, listen, I want a Road Glide or Street Glide ST model front fender and they will order it for you. So that's the fender. As far as the braking, the braking is totally stock front and back. I didn't change anything. The only thing I did was paint the caliper covers in high gloss black. That's all I did on there. We have our Figurati Designs front axle nut covers, Figurati Designs uh, swing arm caps, uh, Figurati Designs cam cover, and Figurati Designs docking hardware cover. I'll leave a link down below so you guys could check that out. Uh, use my code. Uh, you'll get, uh, I think, free shipping. And um, what else? So staying with the front, okay, so stock wheels front and back, stock tires, still good at almost 6,000 miles. I probably, I'm going to say I probably got about another 5,000, maybe a little bit more out of the wheel, so we're uh, out of the tire, so we're definitely no need for replacing them yet. As far as the wheels, uh, they, like I said, they are the stock wheels front and back. What we did was we got them powder coated in the super chrome color and they look really good. They are not exactly like chrome, but let me tell you, they look they look really good and definitely better than stock in that kind of two-part aluminum finish and with the black crinkle finish. The aluminum tends to pit, the uh, clear coating starts to pit on them, but having them powder coated definitely uh, makes it more durable. So now let's go to the suspension. The suspension is really, really big. Oh, I'm sorry, and I powder coated the real rear pulley black. I think it looks good. All right, so, okay, let's start with the back. The back suspension is 14 inch Legend shocks with the reservoir canisters mounted up high like that. I like them. There's a bunch of ways you could mount the reservoir canisters, but that's how I like it. I like how it looks. Well, a lot of people ask me this question. How are you able to put on 14 inch shocks onto this bike and actually be able to still have the axle right there, um, not in the way of the muffler? If you guys could see right here, my finger, right there is the axle. So, what you have to do is, if you go back to my videos by JD Cycle Works, you gotta take the muffler and kind of, kind of draw on the muffler where kind of that axle is going to be hitting. And then you gotta take your hammer, you gotta know what you're doing. You have to dent the back of the muffler a little bit. 
Dave is actually a fabricator. He used to fabricate race cars. So he did that for me and he was able to with special hammers. You can't just go take a framing hammer <laughs> and start smashing the shit out of your muffler. You got to know what you're doing and use the right tools. And he was able to make, there's already a divot, if you know what I'm talking about, like in the muffler stock, but you just take that and kind of form it a little bit deeper and a little bit wider. And we're, and you're able to install the 14 inch shocks on the back with no problem. That's funny, huh? <laughs> so, because I don't want you guys going to take a sledgehammer and start smashing the shit out of your muffler. Um, and then complain to me that I got to go get another $800 muffler. Have somebody do it that knows what they're doing, but you could definitely put on right here. As you guys can see, you could definitely put on the 14 inch shocks with no zero issues and not damage the chrome or anything. You got to know what you're doing. So I got 14 inch on the back. So before we get into the front suspension, let's go over the top and that'll work its way down. So with the top, we got the ODI bar, right? We got Harley Davidson hand grips. We have Flow Motorsport levers, um, stock mirrors. I'm, I am going to be replacing them with uh, black ones. Not sure which ones yet. So this is another big question what people ask me because a lot of people are going to the Kraus ODI bar or the um, MX style bar, right? So it's like a two inch rise instead of the four inch that is on the ODI bar. I have heated grips. Ah, so they say, how, did, how were you able to get your heated grips onto the Kraus Moto bar? Because they don't fit. The heating element on this side, I believe it was, or if it was both sides, I'm not sure. I think it was definitely on this side. The heating element that you have to put inside the bar does not fit. It is close, but it does not fit. You have to get a drill bit. And again, I don't recommend you doing this by yourself, but you got to get a drill bit. You got to bore out the bar about this much. And why I tell you, you have to know what you're doing is because you can't take out two material. Otherwise you're going to destroy the integrity of the bar. It's just a little tiny bit that you got to bore out of the inside of the bar that that heating element is going to slip inside and I've had it since day one on the bike, no issues. The uh, heated grips work absolutely great. I would definitely recommend, this is the first time I've had heated grips on a bike and it is amazing because even with a light glove on like a 50 degree day, it's perfect. So I do have the Memphis Shades hand guards and let me tell you, they are fantastic. I just took them off now for kind of the summer months coming up, only because when you do have a glove on, and I'm always riding with a glove, if it's not too hot, your hands start sweating if you don't get some air over them. But if I do go on a, on a longer trip, definitely the Memphis Shades hand guards are there, are on or late fall, or in the fall, winter, early spring months. It's a must. So from the ODI bar, we have eight inch, uh, kickback riser. This is the Wolf Pro Kit. So it comes with the bar, the 8 inch uh, kickback riser, which you have 12 inches of rise. And then you have, let me see if that helps. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, and then you have the uh, Kraus top triple tree. So now all of that plastic in the cell, all of that is gone. My ignition switch is gone. So Dave set the bike up, check this out. So I don't have any ignition switch. That lock is actually uh, to lock the steering column. So now I don't have an ignition switch. It works basically like a CVO where as long as I have my key fob, which is in there, I just come up to the bike and turn the bike on. Okay, I love it. Second thing is I ran a USB from the battery all the way to here so now I could run my USB line to my quad lock phone. Uh, this is a quad lock wireless charger. I just click my phone on there. I don't have to plug any kind of wire into the cubby. As a matter of fact, I do not have any wires in the cubby because I pulled it out. You guys could go check those videos and it's in here. And what I did was I connected a wireless, let me shut that light off, a wireless Bluetooth adapter 
Definitely check out those videos because now if I come up to my bike, all I gotta do is hook up my phone onto the quad lock. Let me show you really quick. This is really cool. You see that's a quad lock phone case? Done, right? That thing ain't going nowhere. But what also I like about it is, if you guys wanted CarPlay, and I do have Apple CarPlay, it's a $15 clip. Also check out that video. Go back and check out all my videos. But if you look at it, I got a $15 quad lock adapter, which you get off of Amazon, a Bluetooth wireless adapter that is connected to that wire that used to be in the cubby. I just have it in here now because I didn't want wires dangling in the cubby. So now the bike is hooked up. All I did, right? Look, Waze, and now I got Waze on here. I got Apple CarPlay. No wires. You guys get it? No wires. But if you don't have that Bluetooth connector connected, then you would have to actually have the wire from the cubby and plugged into your phone. You get my point? I wanted nothing connected to the phone. I can't stand being on a long trip and having a wire dangling from the cubby to my phone and eventually those wires get frayed. So that's the Wolf Pro kit. And then what I have here is the GP Plus 2. So these cartridges, let's go to the back again, 14 inches, two inches higher than stock. And then right here is Plus 2, two inches higher than stock GP cartridges, which are fully adjustable, preload, rebound, um, compression, dampening, preload, everything, right? So everything is adjustable from these GP cartridges. You could also check out those videos. We have Dyna seals, because our first seals were leaking, but we have the Dyna seals on the tubes now. I got plus two Diamond Lane black anodized tubes. We have the Dyna seals and they have been perfect. No issues with the seals. They also, right from Harley Davidson, they also come with the dust caps. We're not running any oil cooler fan or love jugs on the bike. Uh, potentially I might get that in the future, not sure right now. On the bike, uh, when we're on long trips and uh, if it's gonna be raining or whatever, I'm usually rocking the 11 inch, with they, which they just came out, Clockworks, right? 11 inch, Clockworks, baby. Uh, 11 inch Sport Flare windshield, but now for the summer, I put their six inch Sport Flare windshield on the bike just to, like I said, that's why I took off the uh, hand guards and I took off the 11 inch, went down to a six, just to get some more wind coming over the bike. Because once it starts getting hot and humid here in the Northeast, it's gonna feel like Saigon, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's gonna get hot and humid and sticky. Um, wearing a vest, whatever, it's gonna, it's just gonna be too hot on the bike. Um, what else did we do here? We just replaced the gauges. We used to have the white gauges on the bike, if you guys can remember, so I replaced, oh, and this is from Krauss as well, the gauge bezel. Uh, so we replaced the stock white face gauges with the black, uh, black faced gauges, and we also replaced the chrome bezel and installed the black bezel. I think it looks amazing. All right, what else? So uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, bags, we have the Hogworks bag liners. I love these bag liners. Um, I, I definitely love rocking some bag liners because like in here, like I got my knife. Uh, on the other side, I got my air pump. I got a selfie stick. I have my tire, um, uh, my tire repair kit. So I have all that. You don't want stuff in your bags to be kind of jingling around. And I don't want, you know, when I put this camera inside or my drone, I don't want it banging around. It's nice and soft now. It's got some pockets here, as you guys could see, some stickers, whatever you want to put, or a Slim Jim. <laughs> yeah, so the bag liner is definitely a must. I have my tour pack right there. And the tour pack I also love, and I really never used to like a tour pack, but I love it now on the bike for long trips. And then I could put my Ciro 3D waterproof bag right in front, and I have my backrest, and it's uh, good to go. Also on the back, a lot of people are asking me, 
This bike came stock with the rear brake light down here, right? When you hit the brake, there was a light down here. I took that off. I wanted to be able, because since it's a lot higher now, I wanted to be able to see more of the tire, love the look. This piece actually was connected. This is a big question a lot of people ask me. This piece was connected to the filler panels. So people ask me, well, what'd you do? Did you get new filler panels? Um, I actually did, but they didn't work. They didn't fit. So I actually took this plastic piece, the plastic, uh, these filler panels are plastic. I cut them with a coping saw right there, really nice and carefully. You can't even tell. It looks stock. It looks perfect. That's all you got to do. Just cut them really carefully, even with the bottom of the fender and even with the filler panel and reuse these filler panels. That's all I did. This antenna, it looks like a mini or a shorty. All I did was clip the antenna. I kept that on. The radio still works. Trust me when I tell you. And I didn't like the long antenna. I really rarely use the radio. I'm always streaming my music into my helmet. Um, so that wasn't really an issue. Next question is a lot of people ask me what this is right here. This is my Easy Pass, which I painted black so it's not noticeable on some 3M. What is this called? I'm losing my, I'm losing my mind. I forgot what it's called. 3M, uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, uh, that's on there really good. It's the really heavy, uh, I can't believe, I can't, I can't think of what, it, what, I, what I need to say. It's the 3M, uh, what is this shit called? Velcro, that's it. <laughs> 3M Velcro, as you guys can see, it's the heavy duty stuff. And um, you just, And it's on there securely, and it's uh, inconspicuous. You can't see it. It's painted black, really nice, and it always work when I go through the tolls. Right here, I just have a mount for my camera with a Ulanzi quick disconnect. A lot of people ask me about that. So Ulanzi quick disconnect. I could take this camera off that's handheld in my hand, and then I could just put it on the bike and now you're looking at me and the camera is actually mounted on the bike. I could quick disconnect it off and it's back on my handheld. Big thing, huge thing in here, inside. Also check, check out all the videos. Like I keep telling you guys, go back, hit that subscribe button, go through all the videos because there is a lot of information. And damn, we are almost at 100,000 subscribers. I think about 5,000 subscribers away. How crazy is that? Thanks to every single one of you guys. But in here is an entire Evolution Industries clutch basket with clutch, heavy duty clutch system. They are the best. I mean, I don't care what anybody says, my opinion, they are the best. Prove me wrong. They are the best. Built six springs, built for 160 horsepower. I could replace those six springs and install the red six springs, and this whole setup will be good for 200 horsepower. We're also rocking a Evolution Industries hardened ramp. No problems. Anything, I'll go over a couple things at the end, but zero issues with the clutch. I've had it on silverback. I had no issues. I've had other clutches in the previous builds and it could not handle the power. <clears throat> so I highly recommend Evolution Industries clutch system. Um, these are Kuriakin uh, rear block off plates for the rear passenger pegs. I don't ride anybody, so you just block off the holes. It looks nice and clean. Uh, right there is the battery harness for the trickle charger. So. If you guys remember, I took off my forward controls and I put mid controls on. I took the floorboards off. How is it after 6,000 miles? Freaking amazing, man. I love it. A lot of people, I guess, don't understand it and they'll comment. But if you've never ridden 
a Harley or a bike with mid controls, especially a Road Glide, Street Glide, Road King, don't knock it until you try it, man. It's really good. I like that my feet are a little bit more underneath me. Bike feels more sporty, easier to manage, easier to handle. And as your legs are kind of, and your feet are more up underneath you, it kind of releases that pressure and load off your back and spine. If your legs are forward, your legs aren't taking the brunt or the pressure off of your back and spine, the weight. So I really like it. Um, I don't think I would have a bike any other way <clears throat> if I'm going for the performance aspect of the bike. And as far as the linkage go, the mechanical linkage, it is the shifts are really crisp, short and sweet. And the brake and the levers, both of the levers are like the pegs, I should say, are fairly large, which I like. Really like it. Zero issues. Um, have no problems with it. Um, Arlen Ness, by the way, um, great component. Just love how everything looks and feels and love that my feet are more, like I said, underneath me. You could just feel like, you know, oh, and you could definitely lean the bike over way more. And I've brought the bike down, um, you know, on rides, on, on turns. And honestly, um, you don't have to worry about scraping uh, like the frame and low siding or high siding. So I really like that. Now, the next question, let's go to our beloved Saddleman seat. What could I say? On the previous build Silverback, when we first got the bike, I had, I think, a Drag Specialties Predator 3 seat on there. Was not that comfortable. Looked good, was not that com comfy. After about 100 miles on the bike, my ass would start getting like numb, burning. I'd have to like start scooching around on the seat, trying to get the blood, blood back uh, into my cheeks, start flowing and um, not good. Then we started a partnership with Saddleman I changed over to the SDC Pro Gripper. Then we switched over to the SDC Pro Gripper seat on Silverback. Loved that seat, absolutely loved it. But then this build, we got the step up. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you want comfort, well, I like the look, to tell you the truth, of the step up better than the SDC Pro Gripper. But I'm gonna tell you now, the step up is even more comfortable than the SDC Pro Gripper. Don't know why, but I'm just gonna tell you it is. I could be on the bike for 200 miles, no issues, absolutely zero issues. Rode the bike to Daytona and back, zero issues. I usually stop anyway to refuel about 150 to 180 miles. I'll stop and refuel, zero issues, no problem. These like pleats, whatever you wanna call them, I think it makes the seat even more comfy. I just love it. Excellent quality seat, uh, beautiful styling and comfortable. I think if I wanted next level comfort, I'd probably go with the road sofa, which look really awesome as well. Um, but I love the look. That's the look we're trying to achieve for the bike. So I would definitely highly recommend the Saddleman step-up seat or any Saddleman seat uh, in that regards. So now we, let's go to the motor. So this motor, right? It's our, it's our basic standard 107, right? With an S&S &S 475 cam. We kept the stock oil pump. A lot of people say replace it, but if you if you have a bike 2019 and up, that is already the changed oil pump from Harley Davidson. Dave from uh, JD Cycle Works doesn't see or never seen any issues, um, and really doesn't replace them unless it's a big build. Then definitely go with the S and S um, plate and oil pump. But uh, this is a stock oil pump. Obviously, we got the SNS 475 cam, adjustable push rods, uh, SNS lifters, and that's it as far as the motor um, pushing out 116 horsepower, 117 foot pounds of torque. 
And then you guys know this thing sounds absolutely wicked, wicked, wicked with this Chromeworks two into one outlaw exhaust. Absolutely amazing. And you got to have those reducers, the reducer in there instead of the baffle. Um, I'm not sure if you'd get more power if you'd have the louvered baffle or more torque. But at this point, to lose or gain a couple horsepower, unimportant to me because the sound that this reducer makes is amazing. If I'm looking to gain 10, 20 more horsepower, you're not going to get it from a baffle. You're going to need to step up and start upgrading the engine with a big bore kit. So yeah, the engine is perfect. I have zero issues, zero issues with the clutch, uh, zero issues with the lights. I just absolutely love this build. As you guys know, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, there is only one thing, one thing that I need to do that I should have done already, but I haven't yet. I need to dial in the front suspension because the front suspension really was just adjusted when we installed them per manufacturer specs. But I think it's a little too hard, so I have to soften it up a bit. And obviously the rebound and compression have to be adjusted for my weight specifically. I know there's a guy in Washington, New Jersey, I think it's Washington Cycles. I might head over there by him one day. He's like the master of suspension tuning around our area and this whole entire area. He's definitely known. So I might head over to him one day and see if we could dial in the front suspension and the back suspension. But the suspension in a whole are absolutely amazing. You cannot compare. Even if you had your stock Harley Davidson suspension upgraded, you can't even compare it to that because this is plus two front and back. You got a bigger travel on the suspension. It's, it just feels amazing. Uh, it handles excellent, handles really well. It does not feel heavy because it is raised. The bike, we actually were able to kind of kill, I think about 50 pounds off this bike uh, with everything that we did to it. So the bike does not, it doesn't feel heavy. It really doesn't. It feels light. The bar, the bar setup, the T-bar setup is amazing. I would highly recommend it as well because it is super adjustable, super comfy. It's wide and it's just, you could really, it really feels like you really, you could really manhandle the bike. So other than that, as far as any other changes, uh, definitely want to change the mirrors into black mirrors. But other than that, I think the only one thing that I need to do is adjust the suspension and dial that in. Other than that, man, just ride the living hell out of it. Enjoy the bike, go on some nice trips. Um, like I said, hopefully see you guys this Saturday. May 6th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the meet and greet. Can't wait to see you guys. And as far as the fluids, we're running all Amsoil fluids in the bike. Definitely also check out all those videos because I show you guys exactly what fluids I'm running. Because in the videos, I show you guys what fluids I use in the transmission. And that's a real winner because it's super heavy duty. It quiets up that transmission noise and the clunking and stuff like that. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I got to do some videos in the garage because like I said, it's been raining almost every single day. We got the Hayabusa going to Mike's from Tour Custom Cycles. I'm going to start to start tearing the bike down. Hopefully we'll get it done in two days. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys on the next one. Hit that subscribe button. Peace out. My camera's dying. See you guys later.